Hey everybody, this is Terry. It is February 6th and we're here with the monthly Proto School community call. Happy to have a bunch of folks with us. Oh, I have to push the Brady Bunch button so we can see everybody's faces at once. Very exciting. Um, yeah, maybe just since we have so many people on today, we can just do super quick intros. Um, I'm Terry. I'm the lead for the Proto School project. I'll flip over to Jose. Yep. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm working on the um, website, helping as much as I can, and yeah, delivering as much features as we possibly can to help the authors and uh, event organizers and etc. Uh, Fabio? Hi, I'm Fabio Martins. Uh, for those who weren't here before, I'm just a new TPM from Moxie uh, working at PL uh, in the test ground team um, and uh, I've been onboarding the uh, process uh, on, on the side of the Moxie and as well in the PL. Um, I'm reading as much as I can uh, of your uh, product and um, I, my buddy uh, on uh, PL is the Ollie Evans and he's, he's excellent onboarding people and I'm really glad that I got a chance to work with him um, and that's it for now <laughs> I'm uh, just attending the most awesome. uh, the more the more um, uh, zoom calls as I can to, to get the more context we're, yeah and we're happy to have it. the chance to meet you that's thank great. you thank you uh, thank Jim you. Well, I'm Jim and uh, I've been at PL for a while but um, I'm now on the Filecoin team and I'm actually making the JavaScript library so awesome. Um, awesome. I'm assuming if school does a file coin thing it would use the javascript library so um, yeah we could do both so right now we could do like multiple choice lessons or text-based lessons on basic concepts as we are and then once we have the javascript version we can definitely look at how to implement coding tutorials in the browser so that's awesome so, dan hey i'm dan shields uh i like to call myself the cheerleader of all things colorado and uh blockchain cryptocurrency and distributed web so uh, I've done a few Proto School uh, events here specifically, and in fact, a week from today, we're running the De De Decentralized Network Summit, and uh, I have a whole bunch of people coming out from IPFS and PL. One of the things I'd like to feature is um, a little demo using Proto School, uh, incentivize people to come out, especially for the event just after that. Ether is going on. We got 2,000 plus people. Uh, one of the missions that we'll have people win uh, experience points that we're having this gamified system in is doing a proto school tutorial. So I'm I'm excited to uh, get some more people using this awesome tools you guys are making. Awesome. Awesome. I'm just in the discussion highlights section at the bottom of today's notes. I just dropped a little note, but feel free to drop any links in there, Dan. Um, so people can find them later about that event. Got it. Cool. So I am just looking on my other screen here at our updates. So the way this call works is we usually start with updates in a variety of our key focus areas. So those are content development and learner experience, otherwise known as user experience, but all of our users are learners. Um, and community growth. And then occasionally we have some other odds and ends, but those are the ones for today. So. To get us started, um, Jose, do you want to chat about these two coming soon things in the content development area? Yeah. So as of right now, we're working on the um, uh, a new tutorial for uh, that explains in, an in-depth uh, like di description of how a CID usually works and how IPFS uses it to identify the content. So we actually go through we picked up a, a, a talk from, from Alan that he did on, on the bootcamp last year, and he did a very good explanation on it. So we use infographics as well, so it's very uh, detailed. And uh, yeah, so it will guide you through all of the, um, uh, the, the version zero and version one of CID, if, if you're familiar with it. It basically will let, let you explain, let, let you understand how the version one, for example, came about to be. Um, and yeah, so the next thing also we're looking forward to would be the, um, uh, so we have uh, more, how, how do I say it? Um, so when, when you build um, a tutorial on, uh, on, on, the, on, on, the, on the platform, you actually need to 
writing code. Now we're unfortunate. So we're trying to reduce the amount of code that you actually need to, to not write, but in, in the sense of um, boilerplate uh, kind of uh, development. Copy so, and paste. Trying to exactly. create less copy and pasting work. Exactly. So we're trying to reduce that as much as we can. Um, so basically you are automating some stuff. Uh, so that will come into play uh, very soon. We're, we're just, just about to merge the PR. And we also have some other plans in the future, but for now, this is uh, what we're to do. Basically, for example, now you'll be able to create a tutorial and you won't need to specify the routes of the, uh, the tutorials. We'll just generate them automatically. You don't need to go into the, in this case, the application is on Vue.js, so you don't need to go into routing in the Vue.js application. So we'll be more, some things will be more automatic. And we're working, or working under uh, solutions as well to improve some automation as well to make the author's experience a little bit better. Yeah, it's that's super cool. And those of you who've been around for a while know that Diogo and I updated a lot of um, the documentation about authoring tutorials a while back. So there's, and recently I added a guide on designing effective tutorials. So Jim, this might be of interest to you, for example. So now if you go to the build page on our website, you can find links to both of those guides for designing and developing tutorials and they go walk through things step by step. And as soon as we merge this PR, those instructions will get even simpler with one of those steps removed. So it's exciting. Oh, the other thing I should mention about that anatomy of a CID tutorial is that it will be, we've had under the hood for a while, the ability to make multiple choice tutorials, but we haven't actually used it yet. So this will be our first multiple choice tutorial and we are all prepped up with exciting icons and such for that. Yeah. Um, now, Zay, the next one is your work, but I have it loaded up on my screen to show people so you can tell us about the next one and I can do a little demo here. Yep. Sure. All right. So I am in the last lesson of a tutorial that I've otherwise finished. Look what they did. Yeah. So now yeah. when you actually finish a tutorial, you can get a nice congratulations uh, pop up on the uh, and also a link so you can share the your accomplishment on Twitter. Hopefully this will drive some some traffic in so people can actually get into the share the contents again more people into the tutorials. Yeah. Yeah, we've actually seen people already using this share feature, which is awesome. So great, great way to drive some more traffic. That's great. And then uh, next up. Oh, this one's exciting too. Okay. So this is already launched. This is live. We announced this yesterday. On the website, you will now find some handy little icons. So we have an icon that means this is just text. We found in our metrics that we had some drop off. Some of these tutorials, like maybe the first lesson is text-based, but then you realize it's a bunch of JavaScript coding challenges. And if you don't code or you're very unfamiliar with JavaScript, you'd be like, ooh, and run away. So the, the stats were showing that. So we wanna make it very easy to identify upfront what these are made of here. Um, and if you look at all of our tutorials on this page now, so you see when it when the page loads, it has all of our content here, regardless of the format. And this symbol for the tutorial as a whole is representing the hardest content that exists within there. But we have this little toggle now, so you can stop including the coding tutorials and just see the stuff that you can access without coding skills. So we think this is going to be super helpful for some of the folks who are just trying to get the concepts down and might not awesome. be developers, we want to serve them also. Um, and then we have an issue open right now that I'm going to attempt to tackle, which would, um, so the caching on this site, so the way it knows that I've passed these lessons is all in local storage. If I come from a different browser, it won't work, but we just kind of assume people are probably using the same browser, so we don't need to do anything with a login or anything like that. Um, but one of the things that we could potentially cache is that this toggle status. So if it seems like there's someone who doesn't want to see the coding stuff, we can just leave it hidden and they can always toggle it back later. The other thing I thought we might be able to do is we might be able to pass a parameter in the URL that would start it hidden. So I could give people a URL to use to have the page load with them hidden potentially might be useful. So I'll poke around and see if that's also possible when I work on that. Um, so this is super exciting. This is one of those things that comes out of both user feedback and the metrics we have. So 
Oh, and thanks to Agata who made our little icons. There's um, our little resources, our little book for the reading ones. We have our code one. And then after we publish the anatomy of a CID, you'll get to see our multiple choice one. So those are awesome. All right, next up, mm, what do we have? Oh, yeah, so we have mentioned this on past calls, but it finally merged. And this is one of those things that we hope you will never see. But um, the way that error handling works in Proto School is a little bit complicated because some, sometimes the errors come from you forgetting a semicolon in the code that you write. And sometimes it comes from us forgetting to predict that you might do a thing wrong that we didn't imagine you'd do wrong. And sometimes something happens within IPFS or you look for a CID that doesn't exist on the network. Um, so Alex Potsita has actually put in, a, uh, put in a PR to help identify those errors under the hood, figure out where they're coming from, treat them differently. Um, Jill, while he was on our team, added to that PR and, and made it so we could kind of stop some timeouts in their tracks if it looks like the CID just doesn't exist on the network. And then the other thing that we did is uh, make it so in a case where the problem is our own code, like the validation code is buggy, we have a way that you can just automatically put in an issue. It says, this is a validation error, and here is the code that was filled in in my browser at the time that I encountered it, and that'll help us diagnose. So that's a really cool thing that Jill finished up before he left. That's awesome. Um, he also just fixed some color contrast issues in our buttons that someone had called out for us trying to try to be as accessible as we can as we go along. And then um, we have a new contributor named Carl, who's from Europe, I'm forgetting what country he's from, who popped into the repo having just come and experienced Proto School for the first time and made a lot of great, um, great suggestions and put in PRs to fix typos and fix a markdown rendering issue and put that decentralized data structures at, right at the beginning because he saw it was kind of a prereq for some of the other content. So he's done a lot and um, gave us some feedback on the anatomy of a CID tutorial. And it's always awesome to see new people popping in. Um, and then along those lines, one of the things that I just did recently, oh, go away Zoom thing, gotta get under you. Okay. Uh, one of the things I did recently is just made some text updates to our contribute host and build pages here. Just to make it a little more clear, some of this information was buried in GitHub, but just highlighting the ways that you can contribute from hosting events to building tutorials, to sharing questions and feedback. You could be watching the issue queue. So sometimes when someone asks a question, sometimes when they have a problem with a tutorial, it is the tutorial's fault. Like we didn't explain something clearly enough and we should fix it or we have a coding issue. And sometimes it's just that it's kind of an introductory question and, we, and the thing we should do is just help them by teaching them about IPFS. So people can watch the issues there and help with that. Um, look for those issues that are raised on specific tutorials and submit PRs to fix them, all of that stuff. There's also a little bit of information here for people who aren't used to collaborating on GitHub. So there are lots of things that people can do like fixing typos or making instructions more clear, even if they don't have coding skills, but sometimes folks who haven't, who aren't developers or who have worked in a company that doesn't use GitHub are less familiar with GitHub. So I added a few little um, links to some introductory material about how GitHub works to help people contribute. Um, and then the rest of this was already here. And on that build page, you'll see, um, I believe you'll now see links to both the designing effective tutorials and the detailed instructions for building tutorials. So Jim, that's a great place for you to start if you want to start chatting through an idea on the Proto School side. Um, so some updates there. And then oh, I copied the code of conduct over. I was looking at the uh, GitHub one day told me that we were not supporting our community because we don't have a code of conduct. I'm like, well, we do have a code of conduct. We just didn't have it in that repo. So I copied that to a couple places. Um, so uh, and then I just wanted to give you kind of a sneak preview of some work in progress here and ask for your help, particularly chapter leaders like Dan out there. Um, this is all still a work in progress, but we realize it is work that we cannot finish <laughs> without your help. So we're hoping to add specific event listings to our website. Right now you see chapter listings for groups like dance that present proto-school content over time. Um, 
But in order to find an event near you, you would have to say, okay, I live in Denver. I see that there's a chapter in Denver, click there, go to the GitHub repo, and then figure out where Dan is sharing his postings, whether that's issues in his repo or a link out to a meetup site where he shares them that varies a little bit um, from chapter to chapter. So we want to make it a little bit easier for attendees to find the upcoming content and give people a place to kind of highlight their work. So um, Jose and I have been working together on a new events display that will have upcoming events listed. Um, and for this particular feature of the events that, so some of our chapters offer a lot of great content over time. Like they might have an IPFS meetup and some weeks they have a speaker come in and talk about something and some weeks they go through one of the proto school tutorials in person. So for this website feature in particular, we'll just be looking at the events where you're featuring a proto school tutorial as your main content. So those are the ones that you could submit to be included here. Um, and you'd check off boxes to tell us which tutorials were gonna be featured so we can let people know. If you run a group over time that offers other events, we can include a link so people can go learn more about your group. Um, Kevin and Molly actually presented an event at the Web3 Summit in Berlin this year. So we also have the option to say, this event is being hosted at a conference. So either of those, and then we will ask you to give us the link to your code of conduct so we can help surface that for everyone. Um, and then we have a little button that just takes people to the listing for your site, wherever that is, whether you keep it on a meetup page or an issue in your chapter repo or whatever it is. Um, so just looking, this is lovely. We have most of the UI set up to make this possible, but these are all fake events that we have in the system right now and we need some upcoming events to add. Um, so in this, there's a link to here from the meeting notes, but this is an issue in our organizing repo. Um, so just some notes on what kinds of events qualify to submit here. So you should, it should give learners the opportunity to work through one of our tutorials in person with support. It should have a code of conduct that's aligned with our global code of conduct. And there are, um, if you haven't been to it, there's a resources page in the organizing repo that has links to some really useful background on why code of conducts are important and some templates if you, if you haven't already uh, dealt with that issue before. The event should be educational, not commercial or promotional, and should be not for profit, so free or low cost to attendees. So if your event meets those guidelines, then there's a link right here to a form where you can submit it. Um, so we'd love your help getting those in the queue. I can't make a guarantee about exactly when this PR will launch. It will depend on when we get those events in. So apologies in advance if you submit a super soon coming event and we don't get that merged in time, but we do need that event to populate the database. And we also are planning to show um, some recent past events. So that will uh, give another way for people to find your group at least um, even after your event passes. So that's that and there's a link to where you can make those submissions. So we're excited to release that PR hopefully in the near future. Um, we'll keep you posted when we know more about timing. Um, let's see what else we have here for you. Oh and then I have one other open issue that's looking for a volunteer. So one of the things we'd like to do is uh, create written documentation on what it looks like to take a tutorial from our website and turn it into an in-person live experience. Um, do I need one mentor per 10 people in the room? What, you know, what, what do I actually do to make this work? And we do have um, issues that are discussions where our chapter leaders are sharing what has worked well for them and what hasn't. And we have a resources page, but just some written guidance to kind of help people understand the best practices that are involved in that. So this will be specifically about running, you know, running one particular event that uses our tutorial as its content, not about uh, how do I run a successful meetup over time or about um, how do I run any event with any talk about IPFS, but specifically about how you use our content to create an event. So um, we're looking for a volunteer to work on this. Ideally, it would be someone who has done this <laughs> in their chapter 
um, but a lot of our leaders are super busy. Uh, there are some resources that you could use to get started. Um, Dan, who's here, and Kevin and Stefan actually gave a talk that's very related at IPFS camp that covers a bit of this plus some other broader contacts. So honing in from there into this specific issue and building out on that. Um, and then there's the discussion thread I mentioned on planning your first event and our resources page can all be useful. So if anyone uh, would like to volunteer to jump in on that, it could also be a couple of folks teaming up to share their opinions or giving feedback on, on each other's ideas. That would be awesome. And I think, ooh, nice job adding to the agenda, Dan. All right, I am going to stop sharing. Any questions on the stuff that um, Jose and I just went through? All right. So Dan, what would you like to talk to us about that you haven't already mentioned? Anything? If you're talking, you're on mute. We'll stop on mute. Um, yes, I think I mentioned that briefly. Um, actually, I might just have some questions about what we're uh, talking about. Um, the events, the dummy ones that you have available, those are not yeah. live. Right. Um, those are fake. <laughs> fake and not on the website. So one thing you could put up if, if we hustle is these two events, um, the Decentralized Networking Summit and ETH Denver, because um, those are both really centric around this. The summit, m most of all, um, because uh, it's specifically mostly IPFS based. Um, but uh, with that in mind, then, um, yeah, so I, I guess we'll, we're thinking about slotting in a dedicated actual session um, to highlight the Proto School. <clears throat> if mm -hmm. nothing, mention it and lead to uh, at ETH Denver specifically have people work on Proto School as, yeah, I think I mentioned these missions. <clears throat> so you're at the event, we have a gamified system to help you interact and do fun yeah. things. And uh, so this will be one of them, is complete a tutorial. And I think the requirement will be you have to tweet now that that's available. Um, oh, um, I like it. You see that you tweeted the thing, then you get the points. So nice. hopefully that's some traffic. That's a great idea. I was just going to ask how you were going to prove that they did it. But that's a perfect, that is a perfect plan. I like it. A really good tool to make that happen. Yeah, so this is a case where um, you might want to use both of those fields so it, it if this is if i'm presenting this correctly so if for example it were the the denver ipfs meetup that is kind of sponsoring this thing's presence at east denver you could say hosted by ipfs denver at east denver or something like that um to kind of show the co-location and the group that it's part of at the same time um, I wasn't positive. I had been looking around to see if people had upcoming events scheduled, and I wasn't positive whether you were actually doing Proto School workshops in there. But do feel free to submit that using that form, and feel free to reach out to me um, separately if there's something that's confusing about the form so we can keep um, improving that as we go. I've put in a couple of uh, past events that we'll be able to have loaded in the system where I'm positive that people use that model. but. Um, we don't have upcoming ones to show yet. We have okay. a couple of other, what, what's the date that that would be, Dan? This is the 13th and 14th through 16th. The, the summit's on the 13th. Okay. okay. So I would say put it in, I have a couple of conversations with people here next week that will determine whether we're able to, to get it live that quickly. I'm not positive, but it would be really useful to have the data in there, even like I say, if it ends up in the past events data um, moving forward. I'd really appreciate that. Um, and you've been doing a, you're a perfect example of someone who teaches a ton of different content, including Proto School. And we're hoping that this model will be great to surface when you are doing Proto School and kind of bring some, bring some exposure to the group in general through that. So it's great. And then I have um, one question potentially. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you did some really interesting work around um, exposing, like, if you couldn't find something on IPFS, if it was effectively a bug or uh, something was missing on your end versus the user did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And that sounds really awesome and extensible to many different decentralized applications. Um, so I'm wondering how portable is that, do we think? Is it something that other websites that are using IPFS integrations could uh, potentially leverage or learn from? I don't, 
I don't think so. And Jose, I don't know how deep you've been into it. So tell me if you think I'm wrong, but it's really like, it's so specific. I think it's pretty specific to our use case because we have both like the validation code that we write says, okay, I predict that Terry is going to screw up and not use wrap with directory true. So I'm going to put a, you know, if I see this result, it will be an indicator that she did that. And then I'll give an error that says, hey, did you forget to use wrap with directory true? But what's actually happening in that case is I'm getting an error from IPFS that has some words that are less useful than that. Uh, because they don't know, IPFS itself doesn't know what I was trying to do. We know because of the context of the exercise what you're trying to do. So we know that that error message that comes back from IPFS in this case means you forgot that. So then we translate it into our own language. So that's one kind of thing where it's us writing stuff in the validation code. Um, and then there are things like just the endless timeout within IPFS. But I don't think uh I, and there are different places just the way all the code works together there are reasons that we can identify like the error happened within this function that is the validation code we wrote for this particular lesson or it happened within this function that is the stuff we're doing under the hood i don't think it would be super applicable to other places um unfortunately but uh we did talk to alan recently um, and they are working on some uh, updates. We're actually going to be updating our that override thing that I just described, where we make an error message better. We're going to fix it so that it's depending on error codes, which are still text-based, not numbers, but are more stable than the messages that IPFS presents. So we're going to be fixing that. Um, and then there's a lot of work happening right now. This, I guess this is another thing that should be on kind of the coming soon page of our notes is you can see on the IPFS blog right now, a post from Alan about this upcoming um, async await adaptation of JS IPFS. Um, and the way that that changes things under the hood means that if you don't, if you do just the standard add or cat, somebody interrupt me when you think I go wrong on this. If you use add or cat now, it's gonna return a stream by default instead of what it was, which was I think gather up all of the results and then give them to you. Um, so that's gonna change the way some things work there. I don't know if it'll, it may play out and how some of the error codes work, I'm not positive, but we are going to be going back through our existing tutorials and updating the content to, to up to, match the new um the new api how that works with those commands so i'll actually go and find that um, blog post we can add a link here but that's something that people who are interested in ipfs should keep an eye out for which will affect our content i think unfortunately the answer to your question Nan, is no it's probably not it's probably pretty specific to the way that our code base works and not um something that's very portable yeah no that, that's that's fine um i definitely i think in the future it'd be really cool to see if you do have things that are chunked out mm -hmm. like um that would be fantastic to deliver as content for more advanced users is like yeah because you'll need that to develop robust apps is um fail safe and checking yeah so okay here's Let's see, chat. Okay, I'm gonna paste this here and in the meeting notes. That's that blog post I mentioned about the async await refactor. And I will paste it in. Um, in the meeting notes. Um, I feel like I was about to say something else, but I don't know what it was. Um, no idea. Cool, that'll work. So that's uh that's the latest from Proto School. Um, thank you for your uh, thank you, anonymous hippo, for your additional notes in there. I haven't seen that anonymous hippo was Dan, but to whomever is taking notes, I appreciate it. Might be um, cool. Thank you, everyone. Um, and Jim, yeah, anytime that you want to connect and chat more about 
Filecoin content, I'm happy to. I've been chatting also a little bit with Ava about some preliminary stuff we could do about conceptual, just like how mining works or whatever, some of those underlying concepts that we could do very easily in text or multiple choice formats. So lots of good stuff coming up. Cool. All right. Great to see everybody. And we do this call uh, typically the first Thursday of the month. So there's a GitHub issue that you probably, you may have found us through um, where we just send out kind of recaps from these and then we store all of our, you, you can see our meeting notes here, but we also store them in GitHub. You can go back and watch any of these recordings or check out notes from past calls there. So we will share all of those links after the call and hope to see you next month. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye guys.